go ahead and get started. I'll try to keep an eye uh, for anyone who decides to hop on late. If you guys have any questions at any point, please um, feel free to stop me and ask. I uh, promise I'm going to do my best to get them all answered. And let me see, there's a couple of people in the waiting room here. All right. All right, so we're going to talk about systems tonight. And systems are so, so very important. But before, um, I'm actually going to mute everyone. You can unmute, though, if you want to um, talk, OK? Um, a little bit about me. My name is Megan Hatfield. And I know um, some of you are on my accountability partners teams. And I'm very excited that you all are joining me tonight to talk about systems. Uh, a little bit about me, though, before we um, get started. So I joined 31 um, in October of 2016. And when I first started, um, I really was just doing it for a little bit of extra money. I really didn't know where it was going to lead. Um, and it wasn't until about 18 months later, honestly, that I decided to um, seek leadership. But once I um, learned what leadership can do for you, I decided to fast track myself um, up the career path. And so this past year, I promoted to executive director. Um, and I honestly could not have done any of that promoting without the systems that I put into place. So um, systems are super important. I do work full time still. Um, 31 is definitely still just a side gig for me. And I teach middle school math uh, at my daughter's private school full time. And then um, I have three little girls. They are eight, six, and three, and they're involved in gymnastics, dance, soccer. So we stay on the go. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to all of the busyness of life, right? And that's why systems were so important to me because I knew if I wanted to grow what is my side gig, then I needed to be able to come up with a way to work it consistently, but also very efficiently. Um, because without the efficiency, I wasn't going to be able to squeeze it in my crazy schedule on a daily basis. So um, let's go ahead and get started with talking about systems. So let's start with a quote. Success isn't always about greatness. It's about consistency. As consistent hard work leads to success, greatness will come. And that is truly what systems are about, is creating that consistency in your business. So that way, instead of, you know, trying to constantly come up with new ways or new things, you find something that works and maybe it doesn't work right away, but it's something that you can get better with and over time. And so that allows you to keep that consistency um, as you grow your business, okay? So my best advice of the night, okay, write this one down, start simple, okay, no matter what strategy I share this evening or what system I share this evening, I want you to keep in mind that you really should pick one and it should be something super simple to start with um, because if you try to implement everything that I'm saying tonight, you're going to get super overwhelmed and do nothing um, and we don't, definitely don't want that to happen, okay? Um, because it is um, going to be a lot of information and a lot of exciting information. You're like, oh, that sounds great. I want to do that. Oh, that sounds even better. I got to do that. Okay. So at the end, I want you to think about the one thing that you're going to implement <clears throat> into your business. All right. So one of the things that is very simple that you could start with is your social media presence. Okay. So we have VIP groups, we have our personal profiles, we might have Instagram, um, TikTok, whatever your preference is for social media, you can create that consistency very easily. And I'm sure you actually already do it on your personal profile, right? You share what you're doing or you share posts from um, other people like memes and stuff like that. And so you already do that consistently on your personal profile, but you want to create that same consistency with your business, right? That's going to allow you, allow you to build your brand. Um, I like to think of my VIP group as a place where I can connect with my customers, but also as like my storefront, right? 
that's where I'm going to share what's going on. And I want to keep them engaged because if they're not engaged, they're probably not going to be paying attention to what's new, right? They're going to stop seeing my posts. And um, a way that you can stay consistent and create that system is to create like days of the week. So my example here is like Motivation Monday, Tip Tuesday, Wednesday, um, Throwback Thursday, Fun Friday, Show Me Saturday, Self Care Sunday. And I'm sure that you have noticed that your upline leader probably does those things in her VIP group and in the team page, right? Because that's a way that we can easily create consistency is if we have that theme, we know what to think is going to come next, right? So every Motivation Monday, we find some cute quote and we post it and we talk about how that's going to get us started for the day, right? Um, and so you want to do that same thing with your VIP group and with your customers. You wanna build that consistency into what you're posting. Now, <clears throat> when we're talking about posting to social media, you might be like, well, I don't really have time during the week when I'm working um, to be posting constantly in my VIP group or I forget. Um, and so scheduling has been a huge thing uh, for my business. And whether you wanna use Facebook, which is free, so you can schedule posts, um, right through Facebook, or you want to use one of the um, third-party apps like SendShare, Visily, or Post My Party. Um, all of them are good. They have their um, pros and cons, right? Uh, but there is a monthly fee to that. <coughs> I apologize. Um, but scheduling is really important because you can then time block yourself to sit down and create those things. So during the week, I I'm teaching full time, right? So usually on Sunday, and I say a time well spent on Sunday brings a week of content because if I sit and plan out my team posts and my VIP posts for the week, I go ahead and get those scheduled, then I don't have to worry about what's posting during the week, right? It's already going to be there and it's already going to be set. Now, I will say sometimes on Sundays that doesn't happen, right? We all have things that come up and it doesn't always work out that way. And honestly, I usually work in like 15 minute blocks and that's all you need. So don't think like, oh, I have to sit down for three hours and, and put these posts into, into words and put them into scheduler and, and get all that ready because it doesn't have to be that elaborate. It just has to be you. Um, and so 15 minutes is all it really takes to schedule a couple of posts you know, you can Google um, inspirational sayings, you can find graphics in the graphics groups um, on Facebook and just really be you with it. But creating that schedule of what you're going to post and when you're going to post it is going to keep you consistent instead of it being three weeks before your next post comes out or um, maybe you post six times in one day, but then you don't post again for three more days, right? You really want to keep that consistency going. Um, and so the theme and the scheduling really put that together and create that system. <clears throat> All right, the next thing I want to talk about with systems are connected contacts. So I know your leaders have talked to you about connected contacts and y'all, I am like a connected contacts queen. Um, it is been a game changer for my business when I went through Accelerate. And it doesn't matter if you prefer paper or technology, you just have to pick one. Um, I go back and forth sometimes. I try to do both, but um, <clears throat> I love a paper binder. I love to write things down. Um, but ultimately, it's usually not where I am when I need it. So I tend to lean on technology a little bit more. But if you carry like a tote bag wherever you go and you could keep a binder or a little notebook inside of it all the time, then by all means, paper is a great thing to be able to jot down those ideas. But if you're like me and you work from your phone like 90% of the time, um, then maybe um, an app or... Um, a spreadsheet would be better serving for you. And I can give you guys some examples of what I do specifically um, after we're done talking about it. I'll show you some of the systems that I've put into place. But 
Um, Trello has been my newest uh, journey with connected contacts and other things. There is a free version of, of Trello and you can use the app or you can also use it on a desktop computer. And it allows you to make lists and notes. And again, you can use it, like I said, on a phone or on a computer so you can access it either way. But honestly, when someone messages me back and I'm in the dance line to pick up my daughter from dance, I'm going to message them back, you know, and book their party, but I might forget by the time I get home. And so I love that I can just get on that app, put the date in and don't have to worry about forgetting to write it down later. Um, and connected contacts is a system you really want to put into place. Uh, if you're wanting to grow your business, whether it's bookings, whether it's sponsoring, um, it all really starts with making those connections and knowing when to follow up. Um, so sure, we send out messages and we ask people to book. And when they message us back, we they might have said no, right? Say they said no. But we don't know when to follow up again with that person if we don't write it down. Okay, are you going to remember um, in May that you talked to Susie in January and she didn't want to party then, but she wants to party um, for the summer season, right? So if you don't write that stuff down, it gets lost in your Facebook messenger. And then you probably have never followed up with her again, even though she was interested, just not right now. Um, so making those connections and actually writing them down, taking the time to see who said no, who said maybe later, and who said yes um, is so, so very important. Let me just check my notes here and make sure um, I'm staying on track with what I'm saying here. Um, <clears throat> and along with connected contacts, so we start with our VIP group, right? That is our closest friends and family. And we have to fill our funnel, which is our VIP group, right? When we party, we want people to join our VIP group. Um, but there's other ways that if you get to a point where you're like, I don't know who to reach out to anymore. Um, and so you can look in other places, such as like your email activity report, see who's been clicking on your link. It's in your virtual office or use Google surveys in your parties. Okay. All of those are creating leads for you. They're hot leads. They're not those like reach out, cold contact, random person, um, that you're going to be talking to. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're filling your funnel in multiple ways, not just focused on that close knit family and friends, because eventually, you know, they're not going to want to talk to you if you keep asking them every two months to party with them or to party with you or join your team. Right. Uh, we have to get outside of what I call our circle and you can do that through the party and through connected contacts. Speaking of the party, um, when we went through Accelerate, um, one of the requirements is that we closed eight parties every single month. And I'll be honest, I was not doing eight parties <laughs> at that point in my business. And so that was like super overwhelming. I was like, how am I going to work a full-time job, do all of my kids' activities and do these online parties? I was doing like three to four parties a month. And so that was like a huge step for me that I wasn't sure how I was going to manage. And so that was when I put a lot of systems into place. I do solely Facebook party um, anymore. And of course, COVID kind of had a hand in that as well. But no matter what kind of partying you're doing, creating a system to use is really important because it's going to make it more systematic and more consistent. You're not going to forget a step, um, which honestly, forgetting a step could cause the party to flop or not. Um, and so I use a monthly party tracker, which <clears throat> is when I book all of my parties, I write down, um, let me actually, I'll pull it up here real quick because I do think this is important. Let's see. Oop. Let me see here. I'm just gonna share my whole desktop so I can pull up different things. All right, so here is my monthly party tracker. And so I just write down the hostesses um, names and then it's really like a checkup mark system for me. So did I create the hostess's party link yet? Did I create the Facebook group? Have I sent out welcome messages? 
Um, did I schedule the videos? What time am I going to go live? Um, did I schedule the posts? The entries post is one of the most important posts in my party, and it is a manual post because I count up how many points the guests have at that point. And so um, I make sure that I schedule that or I manually post that one. Um, and then follow up. Did I send out those follow up messages? Did I, um, who did I give the prizes to? Who won prizes? And then one of the most important things that happens at the end of it is the PV. Um, because I want to know when I look back, I keep these. I actually have my ones from 2020 that I've looked back at. Um, because again, that's going to be a lead for me as I'm booking this year's um, parties. And so when I write down that PV total, I can go back and be like, oh, Susie had a $680 party last April. So maybe I want to rebook with Susie this April. Um, so I do keep these as a tracking system. And again, that hot lead system that I can go back every month of the year and see, well, who partied with me last season that did good? Whose party flopped last season? Um, and you know, maybe I don't want to rebook with her. Maybe I want to offer her to join my team and see if, um, she wants to make some extra money. So that is my monthly party tracker. Now, once the party starts, I do focus, like I said, on that entries post. I think that's been a really big key for my parties. And so I'm going to pull up, um, this. So I'm sure you've seen something probably similar to this, um, floating around the Facebook world, but I revamped um, how I do it and just made my own. I mean, it's very similar though to the ones that are definitely out there, but I put um, their, the hostess's name, the party date and who they booked from, because I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of how I met this person or how this um, party came to be. And so when I reach out to the guests and they respond back, I put their name here. I do use a Google survey. I have them um, set their notifications, join my VIP group, um, RSVP, the mess if they message me back, if they place an order, if they attend the live, and if they booked a party. Okay, so those are all the ways that I give points outside of the random comments. Um, but really, this is what I want to track because these are the most important things to me in growing my business. Um, and so those are my focus when I'm tracking who's doing what. And then I do offer my hostesses prizes. So I track that on the same form and who I gave each of the prizes to as well. So this is, again, just my system that has worked for my Facebook parties. Think about how that could, um, and yes, sorry, I'm trying to look at the chat. I will definitely um, send all of the leaders a copy of each of these, and then you guys can tweak them how you want because it really is important that it works for you. Um, and that's why I've recreated my own as well, because I wanted it to be exactly what I need um, and not what someone else made. So, all right. And then the last thing I want to show you with the partying is <clears throat> this schedule. And this schedule is actually a little bit old and I've tweaked my party schedule. But I just want to show you like when I first started putting systems into place, I really wanted the whole party approach to just be so systematic that I wasn't ever going to forget a step. And so I got to the point where I was like, every Monday I'm mailing out hostess packets and mailing prizes and scheduling um, posts. And then every Tuesday I'm going to do this. And every Wednesday I'm going to do this. Um, and so I just really broke it down day by day, what messages needed to be sent to the hostesses, um, what posts needed to be posted, what I needed to do to follow up. Um, but I do think that it's important that you come up, like I said, with what works for you as far as the schedule is concerned. And maybe you're like, well, I don't want to work on Saturday and Sunday. Well, then that's fine. Just divvy out what you do want to do um, on the days that you want to work. Okay. So figure out what days work for you in your schedule and then divvy out the tasks that need to be completed. Um, I do think that this is important. Um, no matter how you break it down, because again, that's going to create that consistency. So every Monday, if you didn't get X, Y, Z done, you're like, well, 
I need to either get it done or it's going to have to get pushed to the next day, but it can't just go away, right? It can't just be something that we forget to do because again, it needs to be done in order for our business to grow. So creating some type of schedule as far as like a constant to-do list, I guess, uh, that revolves. It should be revolving every week. All right, I'm going to go back to sharing um, the PowerPoint. So give me just one second. And I am trying to watch the chat at the same time. <clears throat> okay. Let me get back in presentation mode here. Okay, so that was my online parties. And then the next and final part of creating systems is when you do start sponsoring and want to grow a team, um, it's super important that we get our new team members started strong to help her become as successful as possible, um, as quickly as possible, right? That's what the AMP Jumpstart program is designed to do. But honestly, you being her sponsor, um, you really need to think about a few things. And of course, at first, the very first person you sponsor, it's going to be a complete learning process. Um, but things that you want to keep in mind are how will you communicate with her? How will you help her launch her business? And how will you track her progress? Um, so a system that I use when uh, someone joins my team is I communicate via text. And I have um, a list of text messages that I send to every new consultant. So that way I don't forget um, to tell her uh, to book her launch party or to <clears throat> um, tell her about Amp Jumpstart or to tell her to watch How To Guide Live, right? There's so many amazing resources that Home Office provides for new consultants, but I feel like it's super overwhelming to them to get it all at one time. And so I try to break that part down uh, when she joins and I do host my um, new team members first party for their launch party. I think it's really important for us um, as a leader or as a sponsor trying to work towards leadership that you walk through that process with her. Um, one of the most important things I try to remember is if I walked into Target and I got a job as a cashier, they wouldn't just put me at the register and say, start checking people out, um, or at least I would hope that they wouldn't, right? Um, and so I try to keep that in mind that when someone comes into the business, especially if she's new to direct sales completely, is she needs someone to help her through it. Uh, yes, you know, we can go on TOT and we can read, but again, that's so overwhelming. There's a lot of information there. And so walking her through it step-by-step step, um, is super important. And so you can create a system around that um, as far as that process for you and what that looks like for you. But I, again, my three things that I would say keep in mind when you're starting that process is the communication, super important, whether it's text, Facebook message, email, whatever works for you. Um, but keep that communication open, help her launch her business, whether it's in person or on Facebook, um, help her get started. Maybe she wants to do a catalog party, share how she can do that. Or if she wants to do a fundraiser, share how she can do that. Um, and then make sure you're uh, helping her hit those AMP goals. It's really important that you um, let her know, like how close is she to her 30 days? How close is she to her 90 days? Because as a new consultant, she might not log into TOT every day. And so if you're helping her along to reach those goals, um, that's going to be more supportive and successful for her. So before I open it up for questions, my biggest thing in the business is to work smart, not hard. And so create a system for everything you do in your business. Don't try to reinvent the wheel all the time. That is super exhausting. Um, and once you create a system, use it for a couple of weeks, even a month, and then tweak it. Don't just scrap it all together and be like, oh, that didn't work. That was awful. Figure out what part of it was awful before you just let it go and make adjustments. Tweak this little thing and see if that works and then tweak something else and see if that works. You want to give it time to see if it's working or not and why or why it's not working um, before you um, fix it. Okay. So I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I'm going to look at the chat here. Um, okay. 
think, uh, yes, I will share all of the resources with your leaders and I'll let them um, share that information out. Do you guys have any questions or? Um... I do. Sure. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, hold on. It's weird. I got headphones on and it sounded really weird when I was talking to you. Um, <laughs> You're fine. So the, how you were talking about make Monday, fun day, whatever, like each day have a different theme or whatever, what throws me off sometimes. And I think I stress myself out because I try to create all of this new stuff to post that I've never posted before. And sometimes it gets overwhelming. Is like when we have sales or like the 31% off of your kit or whatever, like how do you, when you're, I want to try to like, okay, this is what I'm going to do on Mondays. This is what I'm going to post about on Tuesdays. I want to try to do something like that, that fits me the best, like what I like to do and post, but how do you keep from getting overwhelmed and like, I don't know what I'm even trying to ask. Does any of that even make sense? <laughs> sorry yes so I keep to my like normal schedule so like the motivation Monday the tip Tuesday and so forth and so on but when things like that drop um those just become my extra posts um during that week and that I do kind of sprinkle in randomly like I have my set ones and then I sprinkle in like spotlights or like the 31% off kits and stuff like that uh, as well. But if we know about it enough in advance, you can use that um, to create your tip Tuesday or to create your fun Friday. Um, if we know what's what's coming early enough, you can kind of plan it around that as well. So like when there's stuff going on, like big sales and stuff like that, I know we got that um, in home sale coming up or whatever. Like, what do you think is too much posting like I did um, on the outlet sale I posted like every hour and a half I feel like that was a little too much I mean I will say usually when I do spotlights I do post them on every hour it depends on how long the sale is going to go I do think this close to home sale is going to be um, a big thing uh, because it's going to be deeply discounted and um so I probably will post a lot the first day, but then also sprinkle it in as supplies last kind of thing. But on a normal day, I would say three to four posts a day is, is more than enough in your VIP group. <clears throat> okay. That's what I was doing. I just didn't know if I was like, you know what I mean? I don't want to overwhelm the people in my group either with like, oh my God, that's all I'm seeing. You know, I joined the group and I like it, but dang, you know? So I just wanted to get your feedback on what you think about what is posting too much. So good deal. Um, I think that answered Hope's question too, hopefully. Anyone else have any questions or? Hey, Megan, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey. Um, if I may, uh, I don't know who was talking last because I'm driving and listening, but it reminded me of something that Cindy Monroe said um, one time, and it's like, there is not, like, posting too much is not a thing, because you might think that everybody is seeing your five posts a day, but really, they're seeing one post a day, or two posts, um, so I just wanted to share that, because I took that to heart, um, and I wanted, yeah, I wanted to share <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. And kind of going off what Whitney just said, um, when you post about something, say it's a raffle or a fundraiser or something like that, if you post it one time and expect it to fill up or expect everyone to jump on sponsoring the fundraiser, it's not going to happen because like she just said, if you post it once, chances are like a third maybe even a quarter of the people are going to see that post and they'll see it like seven days later. Um, so it's important when you're doing things like that in your VIP group that you post about it like every day for six days, because at some point they might see it. 
um, because that is just how the Facebook algorithm works. I see you have your hand up. You can go ahead and ask a question. Hey, so um, I'm fairly new. Um, okay. And I finally got moved into my new home and got my office set up. Thank goodness. <laughs> hey. Um, but um, I, uh, I'm not sure on how to, like I have my VIP group up and I've been posting in that. Um, but I'm not sure how to like find the pictures. Um, I belong to a few groups, but I'm not sure how to find the pictures of the product. Like, you know, that I could post as the picture without it being a screenshot of off my phone. Okay, so there are uh, marketing materials on TOT. Uh, so Home mm -hmm. Office provides us with different graphics every month, and you can download those and save them to your phone. Um, <coughs> on Facebook, though, there are a ton of graphics groups, but one of my favorites is actually uh, the Real Life Products and Personalizations, I think it's called. And you real can life find... Real Life what? Uh, let me look at my phone real quick so I can tell you the actual group name. Sorry. <clears throat> no, you're fine. It's real life pictures and personalization from the pink sandbox. And there are a ton of people in there that post uh, their pictures of their products and how they're using them. And I like to use real life products because we're selling solutions. Um, and some of our graphics are really more salesy. Whereas when you use those real life pictures, it, it sells the solution. So it's real life pictures and personalization. From the, the pink sand. from the pink sand sandbox. Yeah. Oh, from the pink sandbox. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rochelle, for sharing the group. She shared the group in the chat. If you want to click that link. Okay. Sorry. But I don't know how to erase a hand now. <laughs> there should be a button at the bottom where you just click the hand again, actually, and it'll take it away. Um, but that's fine. Oh, lower hand. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Right? You learn something new every day. So it's about. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I love about this group. <clears throat> Good. Does anyone else have any questions? I would love to hear what your one thing is that you're going to implement into your business. Does anyone want to share? I didn't realize how much I really needed a schedule until you showed your schedule because I write everything down that I need to get done, but then I forget about it or I just like don't space it out. Right. I feel like having a more consistent schedule, like every single week having, you know, post this packets on Monday and doing all this stuff, scheduling posts on Monday and actually making a schedule for myself would actually make me more consistent because I, I always forget. And then I'm trying to like find time to catch up with myself and I feel like I run circles because I don't remember what I've already done. <laughs> right. I no. I, that's, yes. Yes. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Absolutely. I'll actually, if you guys want, I'll show you um, what my Trello board looks like. Um, and you can, like I said, you can create an account for free. Um, give me just one second. I'll pull it up here. Well, maybe. Megan, is there a charge for Trello? No, you can have a free account. Um, I think it only charges okay. when you try to share your boards. The free version is definitely more than enough. That's all I use. Um, so I'm actually, all right, I'm going to share my screen. So, yeah, the paid version <clears throat> has more to do with um, like the extra stuff that, that you can add to it, like integrations with other apps and stuff. Because I've used it for projects. Oh, well, good. All right. So here is what, Tre so Trello looks, let me go back to the homepage so you can see it. Sorry, my internet seems to be going super slow. Okay. So here are boards. You can create boards. So I have different boards for different things. 
And one way I use it is I track um, my Facebook parties. Like I said, when someone messages me and I'm out, gosh, my internet is going super slow. I'm so sorry. Um, <clears throat> when I'm out though, I can click on this and I can schedule those dates um, right there. Well, it is not wanting to click. <laughs> I've had that problem all week. <laughs> I don't know oh. why. <laughs> why it's not working. Let me see if I can get it to work and then I can share it. Oh, of course, now it just goes crazy. All right, now it's pulled up again. So let me share. Sorry. So um, I had a list of spring follow, but I'm actually still going through and doing that. But I just try to schedule like a few months out. And so when someone tells me an exact week that they want to party, I go ahead and just put like, she wants to party the night through the 13th. These people want to party these weeks. And so I just keep adding. So you can just like add a card with somebody's name on it. Um, and then I just put the dates. So that way I know um, when they want to party. So that's how I keep track of my calendar with my Facebook parties. And then I think you guys saw the, the daily to do was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so that's my newer schedule. The one that I showed you on paper earlier was kind of the prequel to me learning how to use Trello. Um, but I really do like, <clears throat> like Trello because like I said, I can access it from um, my computer or my phone. Um, so it just makes that easier. All right, anyone else wanna share what uh, their one thing is they're gonna implement, what system they're gonna implement? I'm gonna do the consistency thing because I really need to do that um, with, um, to get in a schedule. To like get to the post? Schedule, but, mm -hmm. Consistently. Definitely. Good. <clears throat> because I think one of the most important things, and I'll tell you, I, the sales part of our business is, is my weakness. Um, and so when I first started, I was that person that posted in my VIP group, like once a week, because I was like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be posting in here. <laughs> and so that was something that I definitely learned um, <clears throat> along the way. And the more that you're there, the more people know that you're open for business, right? If we only show up once a week, then they feel like we're only open once a week, right? Uh, so we want to make yeah. sure that <clears throat> that we know or that they know that we're open all the time. How did you get Trello on? Uh, I think it's just Trello.com, I think. Let me see. Yeah, it's just Trello.com. And then you can log in from there. Anyone else want to share or have any questions? Promise I'm an open book. I really need to check my emails this week. Check your emails? I didn't that know. Is. Yeah, I didn't know about that sale that you're talking about coming up. They haven't released a lot of the details yet. It's still coming, actually. Oh, okay. Well, I still need to check them out. <laughs> <laughs> I, tomorrow is my start date of everything for the business. Everything. Just like I'm going to get in there in the morning in my office and do my little meditation and then start. So. Yeah, and I'll yeah. tell you that's that's I'm the excited. key is to just get started. No matter how big yes, or small it is, just start. Sam, did you have a question? Yeah, so I got two new girls on my team and then my there's another new girl and like one of mine is really struggling because everything is so overwhelming. And I remember when I first started how overwhelming it was. It was freaking crazy and I didn't know what to do. And like I was instantly 
and and I did it to them too but I was instantly in all these groups and like chats and stuff like that you know and I know you hinted on it a little bit earlier but I was just wondering like is there something that you use besides I know you mentioned now that I'm talking about it the text messages that you send out or whatever but like do you have that do you have that in a like wrote down or something like that to where you could share it so that I know, you know what I mean? Like, okay, so the first day, let's just focus on this. The second day, this, so that I'm not, I don't want to overwhelm them. And I, I probably did. <laughs> um, I actually use a texting service called Project Broadcast. And I think now you, the starting cost is $15 a month. Um, I don't think that you're, you need to be there yet. As far as using that, you're welcome to. Um, but I can share you, share with you the words that I use, um, to send each day. So I can send you some screenshots of those messages. I don't have them, um, out in like a word document though, but yes, I can share those. <laughs> That's fine. I appreciate it. I just, I know I don't have a bunch and it's not like I'm getting new recruits every day or anything like that, but when I do get one. Just something to help make it a little easier for me and her, that's all. Right, exactly. It, it's important to create that system. So that way, as you get new recruits um, more frequently, it's important that you already have something in place. So that way, um, you know what comes next, right? You're not, like I said, trying to start all over again with the whole process. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Have you guys been doing connected contacts and writing them down and using them to follow up. <clears throat> I started doing that after the one meeting that you had. I don't know. It was a few meetings ago. And I told you like, I'm going to start doing that. And I've been getting a little bit better about tracking everything. And it's actually, it does make it a lot easier writing down parties and people that I've talked to. Like you said, like a couple girls told me, like, can you just take me off of whatever it is that made you message me? <laughs> so writing down, you know, everything, it helps a lot. Yeah, it, it really does. And also, um, you know, my hostess that um, was supposed to host with me during the outlet sale, she messaged me or I messaged her telling her I was setting up the party and she was like, actually, um, I got COVID. I've been really sick. You know, is there any way we can move it? And, and I was like, sure. You know, do you want to go ahead and set a date or do you want me to check back in with you? And she was like, yeah, check back in with me. And honestly, like life has been so crazy. Had I not wrote that down to follow up with her on a specific day and ask her how she was feeling, I might have let that party just slip away completely. Um, because again, you know, we do get busy, like our, our lives are full of our family and our kids and our full-time jobs. And so writing those things down, um, even as simple as that conversation was, um, is really important. We talk to a lot of people on, on a daily basis and having that little note um, about, you know, what conversation we're having um, is super important. I saw someone say, I was scared at first, but I love Sarah Johnson. Me too. Um, and she has so much info and everything talks about going for the goal and pushing yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is definitely my, my push because connected contacts truly took me from being a director to being an executive director. Um, that, that was a huge, huge gain for my business. And I hope that all of you, if you take nothing away, except starting connected contacts that you do that super simple can be done on paper or on, um, technology, but seriously, just start. Don't be scared to start. All right, guys. Well, if no one else has any, anything they want to add or any questions they have, I'll let you guys um, enjoy the rest of your evening. I know there were a lot of other trainings going on as well tonight, um, but I hope it was super helpful. I will um, share the recording with your upline leader so she can share it to you as well. All right, guys. Thanks so much for hopping on with me. Thank you.